guys welcome back to another video of life on the fly today we're going to be doing another tutorial on tying a fly and this fly i have designed personally and i call it the pollock special number one stone fly now that i use this for steelhead trout in uh usually a uv pink or in a seal fur navyish blue a bright blue actually and um you know i do a bruiser variation of it i do a pink variation um both of them are very effective you know i've hooked into multiple fish with this and i mean honestly it will continue to prove itself effective it does not matter what color it is you know i mean this is an exact copy of the stoneflies about where i live in my waters um ontario canada they have stoneflies are usually about this big this is tied on a size 10 so it is matching you know an adult hatched stonefly um Color doesn't matter that much, I don't think, with uh, fly tying. I think it's more to do with the silhouette of the bug. You know, a fish, you know, in a fast current that's sitting there eating the nymphs and the, the larvae that are going through the water, the only thing to distinguish between a stick and a, and a bug, I don't think it would be the color because they're both the exact same. It would be more of a silhouette. So with this, the silhouette is on point. The size is on point. I tie this through an 8 through 14. 14 is pretty tiny, but... And it's tricky, you know, but I mean, size matters even <laughs> in the fly tying community. So long story short, let's just get right into this. Um, I tied this on a size 10 barbless hook on a nymph hook with um, a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead. So these are the size 10 hooks here. 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead and a nickel. So black. And then I got a lead free 0 0.020 wire on there this fly is a great lead fly great sinker fly gets your flies right down to the bottom if you have a tandem rig or even if you're tight lining you know i haven't i don't do too much euro nymphing i do tight line and um indicators i'm still kind of learning to do it. the indicator i mean i'm only a year into fly fishing i started time before i started fly actually fishing and casting so i mean i love this fly this is always on my rigs um and yeah, so let's just get right into this. Um, I'm going to be using a, a black uni thread in a 6.0 width. So let's just tie this on right here near the collar and the thorax. We'll work it right back. This is a really, really good stonefly variation. I have multiple different stonefly variations, including a hot head. I tie hot heads too, the orange heads. They are pretty good. Uh, there's the copper ones. They look pretty realistic. I have yet to tie like a um, a chartreuse, a green. You know, I mean, I I've I've wanted to, and I mean, with COVID and everything that's going on right now, I can't really get down to the store, so I'm stuck with whatever I got the day before everything shut down. Because I went while everybody was buying toilet paper, I went and I bought fly material because I love flies. I love tying them. So I'm gonna be putting a dubbing on this. This dubbing is an olive, hairline dubbing in an olive. It's rabbit dub. I just use this for a bulk. Color doesn't really matter right now. It's just for a bulk to go underneath so you don't have to waste all your thread. So put on a fair amount there, like so. And you're just gonna to wanna to tie it all right in. Starting from the head, just work your way all the way back until it gets pretty big like that. There we go. And you're just going to bulk this all up. I usually color this in too. If it's not a black dub, I do a color in with a permanent marker. Now, a lot of people say, you know, will, will the smell cause it to cause the fish not to eat it? I mean, if you're nymphing in slow water, like, you know, like if you're nymphing in like a tossing a nymph, maybe behind like a streamer or something like that in like still water, like out on a lake, then who knows i honestly don't think it's gonna matter and you know a lot of the time trout they usually hunt and they eat by sight they don't usually smell they're not like a catfish or a carp right and when you're nymphing in a fast moving water like a river or something like that you know they don't have time to sit there and smell the nymph when they see it coming towards them they're gonna go for it so you're gonna color that or whatever you want to do and then tie this all in so it's nice and bulked up and then what you're going to do is you're going to grab your metal wire. This is craft wire, 20 gauge. This is in pink. So whatever color you decide to do with this, 
match your wire with the thorax color. So for instance, blue, I tie this on black with a blue thorax and blue wire for the tail. Or I'll do pink with a pink thorax and pink wire. You know what I mean? So like, you can mix it up. You know, I'll use a pink, uh, sorry, a, a peacock, like green thorax with like copper wire, normal copper. And I mean, it works well too. I've done the pink with the normal silver wire. Works well. All is well. As long as you get the silhouette and you take your time to really tie this, then all will be well. So you're going to take about three inches there of the wire, you know, maybe about two or three of whatever hook you're tying. Um, then you're going to measure it up to about the whole entire, I don't know if you can see, I'm still filming on the GoPro, um, but you're going to measure about the whole entire length and you're going to tie it at the bottom. Just tie it on there and then you're going to go over top of it and you're going to lap the whole thing so it's blended in with the black. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take some bayets, some goose. These are goose. Um, I'm doing these in a black, depending on what color combination again you want to do. It doesn't really matter. So just grab two bayets. And you're going to tie them in for a tail. Now again, I designed this variation. There are so, so, so many different variations to stoneflies. And again, it's best to match whatever is in your waters. Um, a lot of people say, you know, like, you could just think up flies. Yes and no. You are way more likely to get strikes if you are going with something that the fish see commonly. You know, maybe you're tossing something into a stocked trout pond and, you know, they don't, they don't see that many leeches or, you know, they don't see that many flies or whatever the case, right? Either way, I mean, whatever you find under the rock, match it, match the hatch. That is the main thing. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the tail just like that. I don't know if you can see it there. There we go. So you're going to make it out like that. So it's literally just like a V. You're going to tie and you're going to make sure that the tail is covered completely in black here. Then I do a wrap behind and around on the opposite way as the tail so that it stands the tail up the wire. You want the tail to be stood up like that. I don't know if you can see that. So it's like that. You're going to wrap the wire underneath and then over in a pattern. And then you're going to do it in lines like that. So you're going to do it in lines. So it's basically like a, a lined pattern here. Tie that in and lock the wire in place. Then you're going to take your thread and you're going to go about halfway back on the hook so right about there right there i don't know if you can see the focus on this it's kind of bad so right about here just enough so that you can make a wing case you can make the legs and you can put on the thorax you're just going to kind of go back and forth and build up over that wire you're going to come right back then you're going to take turkey, turkey feather, tail feathers. I like to use the ends. I'm going to end up buying some um, acid dye and just dye the whole feathers because I usually only use the, the brown parts for the copper ones and the black ones for the black ones. Um, it'd be good to get a whole black dyed feather. I don't usually buy my, like I buy a lot of materials from the actual store, but I have a lot of hunters in my family as well. So it's very, I'm very fortunate that way to get free stuff and be able to experiment so you're going to cut a strip like so and you're going to use that as the wing case so what you're going to do is you're going to measure right up to the front like this just past the head you're going to grab it so that it bends kind of over top of the fly like that and you're going to do like three wraps or four wraps 
You're going to take this, cut the trim. So that would be your wing case. Then you can position it and then bend it back, put the side, the thread on that side and work towards the, the head. So now this, when we build up the thorax and put the legs on, you can bring it over top so it's a wing case. So that's how I do my wing casings on all my flies. Okay, and next is you're gonna get the crazy legs. I usually get the black and blue because I like the black and blue variations. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut a, some of the black. I already got some pre-cut right here. You're gonna cut that in half into two legs. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your one side of the leg, tie on on the other, on the one side. So it's like an X, X leg, a superior X. Tie it up so that the legs are looking good, just like that. I think you can see it, yeah. Okay. And you're gonna take the other side and do the same. So this is kind of a cross between I mean, I don't really know. I just kind of came up with this. I used to think stoneflies were the hardest freaking things to tie. As I was tying like woolly buggers and like all sorts of different dry flies and nymphs. And I thought stoneflies were the hardest thing. But as soon as I mastered getting the wing case and the arms, that was it. Took off. You just need the proper materials for the proper job, right? So now you could trim the legs. I like them maybe about a half inch on the front about well maybe about a half inch actually on the back and then quarter inch on the front so that it's like this i think you can see that yep okay so now what you're going to do is whatever color you choose i'm going with the pink uv so i know that this is effective take a big clump you know put it right on the Put it right on the thread, like that, move her up, and you're gonna wrap, like that. Get a nice fat body going on. Bulk them right up. Push back on the legs, go on the other side. You can tie like this, right there. So now you're at the front, now you got the body. The legs are still working out. Still good, you got the body, everything's good. Life is good. And then, now that you're at the head, you milled up a collar. You're gonna take some more bites so you can use for the antennas. One. Two. And you're gonna tie these right on. As the antennas. Again, I said that color doesn't really matter too much. I mean, I think it does play a big role still because, you know, it all depends on what maybe your background might be. So let's say like, you know, if you have a darker background and it all depends on the sun too, right? The way that we see color with our receptors is a lot different than fish. And, you know, nobody is going to know what a fish sees. The, I'm sorry, the scientists will not be able to tell you. I really don't believe that because, um, you know, we're not the fish. We know what a fish will go for, but we are not a fish, so we will never know. But all I do know is that the receptors in our eyes and the fish's eyes are a little bit different because they can see different violets of radiation, right? So meaning, and also in the water, water absorbs. So whatever, like, say, like let's say it's cloudy, let's say it's a sunny day, a rainy day, whatever, it all affects the patterns on the light um, going into the water and different absorptions at different depths like at all you're gonna have to just play it out and see what works for you i do know that pink on certain days like pink on like cloudy days kind of a bit dark pink works really good um that's just one of my things that i do know um on sunny days and bright days bright flies bright skies bright bright flies and dark skies dark flies so yeah okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your wing case you're gonna pull it over and you're going to tie it on right where the head is. You can just straighten it up. 
do whatever you need. And instead of cutting it like that, because I always find it, it leaves too big of an edge on the end, just grab it and pull it back. But make sure that your antennas stay out, or your tentacles, or whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, bend it back. Just do a few wraps so that it stays back like that, and then you can cut it. Make sure not to cut the legs though. There we go, just like that. You can trim this all up. And then we'll do one, two, tie her off. And snip. And you can add some head cement. I love adding head cement to the green case, so it makes it very hard. Add it to the tail, and then this thing is built like a tank. Nothing, no matter how many fights you're going to get in, the only way you're going to lose this guy is if you break off. But honestly, I'll tie up so many of these. I'll tie like at least six of them in a day. So many of them. I'll sit here in like literally in an hour and just tie up so many of them. I have a box full of them just because they break off a lot because they're so heavy too. So they catch on the bottom a lot. Cool. I like to just wet the antennas with head cement too. So it makes them a little bit more sturdy. Gives them a bit of a waterproof coat. So guys, I thank you so much for tuning into this video. Again, try out this fly. Try out what works for you. You can make your own variations of any sort of stone fly. You know, that's the joy of being a fly tire is it's all creativity. You could just explore your imagination on what you want to tie. Just have fun at it. Go out, fish, and just remain motivated. Thank you for this video. Like and subscribe for more. Drop a comment. I would love to hear you guys' opinions. Love to hear some you know, maybe suggestions on what to tie, what what videos you want me to do. I'm going to be doing a how-to series on, on certain knots, certain ways to cast, certain ways to just whatever in the bush. You know, I'm such an adventurous person. I love it, and I would love to bring you guys with me. Thanks. Bye.